Hello everyone. Last video today, I promise. Thank you for hanging with me. Today we are going to take on the Gobble Monster, aka Grave of Rot, Stage 9. Okie dokie, this is going to be the last one of this dungeon series for now. And we'll look at the other two, I'm sure, in a week. Or so. So what I'm going to do today is show you my team, talk about tactics and some potential other options you could use if you do not have my team. Now, firstly, a few things to clear up. I am using Legendary Heroes. This is not a free-to-play account. Um, I've been playing since closed beta test, so I am quite fortunate that I have quite a lot of heroes. So I'm just using what works for me. But, as I say, we will talk about other options you could use. Sigrid's <coughs> amazing. Okay, right. So without further ado, Gobble Monster. Um, he drops some pretty nice gear. He drops Mona Lisa's Blessing. Um... Okie Koki, um, which uh, when you cast your ultimate, heals someone based on the max HP of the person wearing it. Very nice set, helps you know top up healers if you're struggling. And Puppeteer's Inspiration, which is new to season three, very good piece. I love it. Uh, allies around the wearer gain defense up equal to 15% of the wearer's defense. So a good option for main tanks or off tanks. Um, and especially good in Vortex because you're all quite compact. Um, so you share the defense, which will hopefully allow you to last a bit longer. Mythic gear pieces. I have done a separate video on these. But the main one we're looking for, if it drops, is the Tunnel King's Cloak here. Or Fish in Troubled Waters, where the wearer has a 50% chance of dispelling a buff from the enemy when inflicting debuffs. Uh, so that could be good. Uh, for Curse as well as uh, potentially some of the other world or fights or chief challenges that will come up later in the season. Let's take a step inside. Now, I am not at day 30 on this server. I do not necessarily recommend farming dungeons until you get the double drop rate. But should you choose to, obviously um, you can, right? We are just going to make a couple of changes here, the same changes that I've been making for a lot of these because I have not updated the gear yet. There is that one, and we also have that one seems okay. This one, I don't know if I've gained enough coin to level this one up. To we have oh double HP row and some skill haste lovely stuff we will drop that one in there uh, we will just quickly save the gear to update it so as always Ardreth is in her three piece tundra set which reduces the damage she takes if it's not crit um, and being a PV dungeon, they do not crit. She also is wearing the Craven's Eye Patch, which further reduces damage should she take a big hit. We have Asilla in the Solar King's Horn. A bit of enlightenment just to increase the heals. And, but more importantly for this one, for this particular dungeon, she dispels debuffs from allies and grants debuff immunity. So what could you use in place of her? Uh, budget option is V-Cook. Uh, V-Cook does dispel buffs. I don't think he's got the debuff immunity off the top of my head, but the way that I use her, I use her on a 20-second uh, rotation, so as long as you do it after the boss's second ability, it shouldn't matter too much. And then the Soda King's Horn to... Um, boost the damage of my Thalendor. Rose is here in the Witch's Remains. Of course, you could use Crown of Unclean in uh, Curse or Rot, because there is only one boss. So, uh, 
crown is less good in Harpy because you've got the four elements. But say I am using Witch's Remains here. She is here quite simply to put the recharge speed penalty up because this is another 18 second rotation boss fight. So it makes it a lot easier for mine guys just to do their thing and attack down. She has on the same ability, which is her ultimate. Uh, she has not the same ability. She has attack down and buff dispel on this one. And with the Rich's Remains also placing decreased defense, the battle skill is where she has her recharge speed penalty. Cinerel is here to do Cinerel things. Also keep the attack down up and heal and push shields because of the staff. Now, I've gone a bit overkill here. Um, you'll see I've got three characters which remove buffs, and I have four characters that heal. Now, do I need that many? Probably not. Can I clear the dungeon, though, without any worries? Yes, I can. So, on that front for now, uh, I will just leave it as it is. Thelindor, then is our only damage dealer for this fight, as he has been for a lot of them. Wearing his flute, 99% uh, crit rate and a little over 200% crit damage. Defense aura, as we have done for a lot of them, I could probably get away with using the attack aura that Felindor has, but I'm not going to. So... Looking at the boss himself then, so like all bosses, he is immune to control, okay? And the passive he has is he deals damage to the enemy while reducing their max HP equal to 6% of the damage. And when dealing damage, this damage is increased by 10% for every debuff on the target. When taking damage, there is a 100% chance of inflicting one stack of poison on the attacker. So his first ability is uh, whoops, uh, poison damage and inflicts healing prohibition and poison. So you'll see why you sort of need a debuff remover. He is a second ability and is he centers on the current enemy and deals poison damage and inflicts recharge speed penalty on them. Damage is shared between everyone. So this is where my Ascilla goes. So after the second ability, she will clear all of these debuffs and give us debuff immunity uh, for a little bit. But say if you don't have the debuff immunity and you've just got the cleanse, that's fine too. Still time it sort of around 13 seconds. And then the boss's last ability is he chows down on one of your heroes, dispels all buffs from them. Uh, if they are inflicted with debuffs. Mine shouldn't be, so he should be okay there. And then he continues to munch on them for a few seconds. He also heals equal to the damage dealt. Now, this is the important thing here. You can go around this in two ways. So the firstly, is someone like a Sigrid, who puts heal prohibition, is excellent for this fight, especially as Sigrid also puts attack down. So... If for whatever reason she didn't land the uh, HP reduction, she's going to reduce the damage that he deals, so he's going to heal less. The other thing you can do is you can bring someone who brings invincibility. So, obviously, Cinerel is godlike for this because you have to manual it because I haven't figured out Cinerel's timing. I'm sure someone has. But if I put Cinerel's uh, ultimate on my Ardreth as he eats her uh, he can't do any damage because she's invincible so he doesn't heal so that's the other way of getting around it in this fight so we're going to start here okay I'm going to take Cinerel off and as I say I do have to manual this one so Ardreth comes in Rose will clear some of the debuffs uh, so we'll clear the rest and then just as we get near I'm going to pop the invincibility on my Ardreth, we'll slow it down so when he bunts eats her there's no healing just the damage that is being done and then Ardreth will go again, she will just use her ability to clear some debuffs herself 
and we rinse and repeat essentially. So Rose will do hers, put defense down, clear some debuffs, Asuna will clear the rest. Now, I've got the one just on default, so that's why they've gone before the second ability, but because Asilla has debuff immunity, I don't need to worry because that second hit hasn't landed anything. Invincibility once again on Ardreth. So then when he noms on her, nom nom nom, say, no healing for the boss because we are invincible. And it's just a rinse and repeat from there, essentially. Uh, again, Rose will clear some debuffs. Esther will finish the rest, put debuff immunity on us. And so when this ability rolls around, nothing happens. You get the idea. Now, I can full auto this, okay? I know I'm manually Cinerail here, but I can full auto. It's just a little bit slower. Because I say Cinderella will target anyone he fancies. Normally it tends to be my Thelendor or himself rather than Ardreth. Um, but that's okay. You know, so a clear is a clear at the end of the day. None of us are going to compete with the massive whales in all the servers. Um, just as long as you can clear it, it doesn't matter on the timing per se. And there we are, guys. So perhaps last rotation. Might be one more after this, depending. No, okay, so looks like there is going to be one more rotation required. Immortality there. No heals. Out he pops. She'll increase the healing. Oh. Pow, pow, pow. And this should do us now. There we are. And that is the fight. Any nice pieces for me? We did get a legendary hammer for the puppeteer set, I believe it is. Oh, that is a nice one. We will lock that so we don't sell it accidentally. Attack percent is always good, especially with the runes, but the substats are not great. So we'll get some coinage there. Crit rate and resistance, they are not complementing stats, so I will get rid of that one. And then nasty crit damage and resistance, I will drop that one too. So we'll go back to redeploy, we'll just take a look at some other options. So if we click down here and we go to filter, let's start with uh, healing reduction. So these are all the heroes that put healing reduction up. So if you've got your Gulens, your Donellas, your Muffins, happy days but muffin is uh, random so he's got one of a few so just bear that in mind whereas Danella's is on a, a passive Dane I believe has it on a battle skill so again it's kind of difficult to time sometimes right you want someone with it on an ultimate such as um, no it's not what I want at all where is she Sigrid there she is. So, Sigrid, we, there's no surprise on just how good Sigrid is. But, say, she puts healing prohibition and attack penalty down. So, she is just amazing for this fight. You don't need to worry about the fact that she doesn't uh, hit multiple targets in this one again. Because there is only one boss. So, she is very good here. Because it's on the ultimate. Another option is uh Jijek, 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 however you say it. Um third attack has a chance of inflicting healing prohibition. Um now it is a seventy five percent chance but you can book it up to a hundred percent chance and he hits three times so it is a good option for your crown of your uncleans or your which is remains. Um, and then let's look at your cleansers, because that is your another sort of important um, aspect of this fight. Okie okay, I mean, all your debuff blocks, even. Let's, um... Now you've got your Theas, and now this is for uh, ranged units only. Okay, so it wouldn't affect your tank, 
Reaper is a good option. She also inflicts healing prohibition, which is nice. So you could potentially do this maybe at the very, very last second where the boss does his ult, and hopefully it will last the row full rotation, but I wouldn't rely on that. I would do this nice and early, sort of at your first rotation of the boss to make sure that that 10 seconds spreads uh, both of them, so it is an option. Catherine heals her allies, debuff immunity. Uh, Garion, is that his battle skill? Yeah, it is his battle skill, so perhaps Garion isn't the best option there, but Yathea and your Catherine's are. And then we'll find our cleanses uh, dispel debuffs so there are obviously lots of legendary options here uh, Gulend and Asila do a full cleanse on so they're the only ones with a full cleanse I believe everyone else will have something they'll get rid of one or two in the legendary options Vikuk though dispels two debuffs okay so um, you say is another option you can look at um, although when you're attacking the boss and by the second ability you do get uh, a third debuff so you get your poison, your healing prohibition and your recharge speed penalty so up to you whether you want to chance it on that third one and get rid of your recharge speed and your healing penalty or whether you bring someone else as well if you are bringing a third cleanser as it were i would do vikuk after the first ability to get rid of your healing prohibition and your poison and then have your third person to get rid of your uh, recharge speed penalty um hexandra b uh does it on ECA does it on battle skill who was it i was looking at that had it on enna that's what I was thinking of. Uh, dispels it and she puts healing recovery. So it's okay. Um, but if you have her go after the second ability and Vikuk on the first, you'll have cleansed all your debuffs and then you just maybe have your Sigrid go just before the third for your healing block and your attack down. So certainly a budget friendly option there, especially if you're on season two uh, because lightning and poison was paired together. So your Vikuk your Enna and your Sigrid's thumbs up. At that point, you just maybe need a Hexandra and a Furbath, and you're good to go. So there we are, guys. Uh, this one's dragged on a little bit longer than the last two. I do apologise for that. But that is Gobble Monster Grave of Rot Stage 9. Thank you for taking the time to watch. Uh, have a good day, whatever it is you're doing. Take it easy and remember work hard but remember as always play harder i'll see you in another video soon cheers